Well, I have a treat for you. I'm going to go over the most recent studies, their meta-analysis of studies. They're not actual studies, but they've taken together up to 200, maybe even more. It's a little confusing because I watched so many videos on this subject. It all blended together, but I got one really good graphic that I will walk you through this graphic, and it's compiled from 200 or 240 studies. They took all the data from these studies and mixed it together to solve the debate once and for all, what's better, reps or reserve or training to failure. But before we get there, the spiel must commence. Like, subscribe, and share the shit out of this. Spread it like herpes. Speaking of herpes, I'm a medical doctor. If you want me to be your doctor, click the link in the description box. Click the consult option, which is the top option. I can order you blood work. I can read your blood work. I can treat you as a normal HRT clinic would treat you. I also do coaching. My Apex Coaching is the business that Dr. Krita Dodson and I co-own that we will do your nutrition, your training programming. I will handle all your medical stuff. It's the only place where you can get medical care and coaching in one place, and you have two doctors. It's the best deal in town. You can't beat it. And right now we have it set up so that there's financing options. So you only have to make monthly payments. You will love it. Get started immediately. Now, on with the show. You're watching Dr. Todd Lee TV, where theoretically you could learn a bunch of cool shit. Warning! This is for entertainment purposes only. Do not take this seriously. This is not medical advice. Although I'm a doctor, I'm not your doctor yet. If you want me to be your doctor, clip the link in the description box. But otherwise, this is just for fun, kids. Don't do this at home. Okay, so now I got that shit out of the way. Before I whip out the graph, I want to have a little bit of foreplay. So... Some of you may not know what the fuck this is even about. There's like, I like Todd's videos because he's my favorite. He's such a jerk. He says some silly things. So training to failure means different things to different people because they have a different idea of what failure means. The true definition of failure and the definition of failure that scientists use is the muscle you're trying to train fails to complete a complete rep. So if you're do, doing bicep curls, oh, this is pathetic. Oh, well, you know, my heart, whatever. And you like, eh. and then eh. that's, you failed here. And then you just fucked around and threw a bunch of extra muscles into it. That does. So like, if someone's going like this, like a lot of assholes lift, every rep's a failed rep. Like the, the weight was too heavy from the very first fucking rep that they have no idea how to lift. And, you know, there's people who are like, I don't know. Mike Van Wick just did a video about this, just did a video about this. And he's making fun of people for actually trying to have good form. Um, it, whatever. The point is, some of us don't want to get hurt. We just want to grow the muscle. and. There's lots of bodybuilders, a million times more successful than Mike Van Wick, who do use correct tempo and form, like Justin Shire, like uh, um, Nick Walker, and they're some of the best bodybuilders in the world, and they have excellent form and excellent tempo. So without any further shit talking, because I like a lot of Mike's content, I just didn't like that one thing that he said um his example well i'm not even gonna get into that he was gonna say that there's lots of people who use high frequency training and high frequency training stupid because of mike menser dorian yates and ronnie coleman the best of all time ronnie coleman trained everybody part twice a week that's relatively high frequency so that's eliminated mike menser didn't build his physique using his principles he got that from arthur jones after he retired he got to number two in the Olympia training like everybody else, high volume and high frequency and normal moderate weight. Dorian said the only reason why he only trains with that little volume is because he gets sick if he tries to train more frequently or with more reps. 
and volume. And there's a reason for that is that training to failure or training beyond failure, like Menser or Darian Yates taught, makes you sick because it wears you down. It's really high in fatigue. That the amount of fatigue that is accumulated with those last couple reps is much higher than the whole previous set. And this is from personal experience too, is like for 30 years, I trained to failure and the last two years, I'm um, last two months, maybe one and a half months, I've been training with reps in the tank and I'm able to squeeze out multiple sets with the same load. So rather than training to failure and then having to drop the weight to try to stay in the rep range or get less reps. So I'll give you an example. If I did a, uh, 150 pounds for 12 reps, then that it failed at 12. Then the very next set, I'm going to do 150 pounds. I'm going to get like six reps, maybe seven reps. And the very next set, I'm going to get like four reps. So four is beneath the effective reps model, which the idea is, is that five reps in reserve gives you like one point. Two reps in reserve gives you two points. I mean, four reps in reserve gives you two points. Three points, four points, all the way up to six points with zero reps in reserve and that there's a linear increase in the amount of muscle you gain for every rep you take beyond that five reps in reserve point and all the reps below reps in reserve is worthless well this graph right here will show otherwise all right right here let's do this hi yeah all right let's see if i can do this quickly oh i fucked it up all right Grandpa Smurf's got it. All right, so I can move this around. We All right, so here you go. Now, if you look right here, this is reps in reserve. As it goes, zero reps in reserve, one rep in reserve, two reps in reserve, three reps in reserve, four reps in reserve, five reps in reserve, six reps in reserve. Now, I don't remember what the sources were for these graphs. I took the graphs from someone else's video. I can't even say his name. He's a Finnish dude. Um, something Hamanso or something. I'll put the link in the description box to the original video just so you, I'm not ripping the dude off. But if you notice between here and here, there's not a big difference between two reps in reserve and this is two, three, four, five reps in reserve. Five reps in reserve. I don't know why they get to come up with this weird coefficient, but this is a 0. 0.3. And then you don't hit 0. 0.4 until you're at two reps in reserve. So five reps in reserve, you could crank out four, five, six sets and still get 12 reps, 12 reps, 12 reps, 12 reps, 12 reps, 12 reps, 12 reps. So five times 0.3 is 15 or 1.5. So you sum these up that the studies have shown beyond a shadow of a doubt, it's not intensity that generates muscle size, it's volume. It's measured in sets, but the only sets that count are taken close to failure. So if, if this is five reps in reserve and this is six reps in reserve, there's a huge steep drop off of 0.1. So it, it's basically you're losing 50%, uh, 33% to go six reps in reserve. And then this is low velocity loss. Now, if we go over here at high velocity loss, so the reps are going like one, two, three, four, five. Once you hit that slow as fuck rep, you're right here. This is where, if you look at the little man that's holding his head and saying, oy, oy, that this is where the neurological fatigue kicks in. Once you get to this point where you feel like shit, the nervous system can't contract as hard for subsequent sets. So if this is your second or first set in the day and you've got three body parts and each body parts is six um, sets, which sounds low volume, but if you're hitting that everything three times a week, that's not low volume. That's 18 sets a week. That's very, very good volume. So you're going to fuck up the other 15 sets of the day or uh, 17 sets of the day. If you get to the part of your, so the going to two RIR is minusculely better than three RIR. Because you notice there's like a, a little bicep peak that's on exploding, exploding peaks. That sounds like a cool name for like a band, a band about 
um, like nuclear waste breast implants. Like Chechnyan separatists put radioactive breast implants into chicks and then send them somewhere so they can blow up inside Moscow's the Kremlin or something. That would they're like, oh man, I don't know. This video is gonna get banned because someone's not gonna like that. All right, I just picked some shit out of a hat. I'm sorry if you're Chechenin. No, I don't want you to blow up if you live in Moscow. I want to visit Moscow. I can't visit it if it blows the fuck up. So no, I don't want this to happen. All right, so God, people are so fucking sensitive. How do you live with yourself when you're that sensitive? Are you just crying all the time, talking to your cat when it turns away from you and it eats your Ben and Jerry's? Like, what is the fucking deal with sensitive people? Why? Oh, they make me sick. All right. So anyway, back to this. See how stressed out he is? Anyway, that's basically how I feel when I think about sensitive people. Is just like they just stress me the fuck out. Like, just shut the fuck up. With your feelings so back to feeling the muscle grow there's really no difference between two rir and four rir except for you start to get oh hey and when you get to the two rir point and then one rir is slightly better it's from 0.4 to 0.44 it's like 10 percent better than um two rir and then you're like taking a shit in the bed you're pulling an amber herd when you get to um zero RER. And you're like, why is that? Why is zero RER taking it to failure worse than just stopping at one rep and reserve? And I think the reason is the amount of neuromuscular failure and fatigue will detrimentally affect the workout so vastly at this point. Like I have a hard time gauging where my reps and reserve are. I often hit failure before I realize it. So I like using this high velocity loss as a proxy. I'm like, oh shit, that was a slow rep. That means I should stop because taking the set any deeper isn't going to get me much more muscle growth, but it is going to stress me the fuck out and it's going to hurt the next set and the set after that and the set after that. And it's the amount of good sets that give you muscle growth not necessarily how many reps are in that set. And as you can see, doing sets of five doesn't really make any sense because you could stop six RIR. You could take a weight you could do six times and do it once. You're still going to get some muscle growth. You still get some muscle growth with just one rep, even if it's six six RIR. And I've actually seen an extended version of this graph and you're getting value out of reps all the way to 12 RAR. So if you grabbed a weight you could do 20 times and you do 10 of it, even your deload week is actually stimulatory. It's not a waste of time. That um John Jewett and Luke Miller um reviewed a paper that said that deload weeks are bad. And that's a very oversimplification, but basically their idea of a deload week, not John Jewett and Luke Miller, but the people who did the paper, their idea of a deload week was not going to the gym at all. And that when people came back to the gym, they were stressed out and tired and they had more perceived effort. That's not a deload. A deload is cutting the weight in half or training at like eight RAR or five RAR. And, you know, you, you do the same amount of volume. In theory, you do the same amount of reps. Well, you do less because you're doing RAR reduction. So you take 10% off the load and you train at like eight RAR or ten, five RAR. And you do a very easy workout for about three or four days. You do every body part once. And then the second half of the week, when you hit the body parts a second time, that's when you take three days off. And then when you come back, you're coming back at five RIR again or three RIR again. So that you're still stimulating tissue like that. You're not stimulating tissue as much, but the idea is to wash off fatigue during the deload week. Because generally, if you use like the RP model, this is going to be week one, and then this is going to be week two. You add a rep, and then this is going to be week three, and this is going to be week four, and then you do a week like this just to set your numbers. Like, oh, I got 13 with 150, and then when you take a deload week, you're like, okay, I'm going to go negative eight. So if I got 13 is zero, then minus eight is five. So I do five reps with 150, and then when you come back. You start over here, 
and you go up to 155. And this is 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. So you do nine reps with 155 and you do that for one, two, three, four, five sets. Because if you get nine here and you're that far away from failure, you get nine over here. Then the next set, if this is four RAR, then the next set's three RAR. And then the next set's two RAR. And the next set's one RAR. And then you're like, I'm still getting, I'm like, this is really hard. These last two sets, the last rep went really fucking slow, but I'm still getting nine reps and I've already done four sets. So that means if this is 0.35 and this is 0.45, the aggregate sum is 0 0.4, 0 0.4 times four is 1.6. You got 1.6 units of muscle growth. That's pretty fucking cool. If you had just started here and climbed the ladder three steps, one, two, three, you would have only got 1.2. So you start with 10 reps, 10, 10, 10. And you're like, well, I don't understand. Why are you going to the right? I'm like saying, because if you're four reps in reserve at nine reps on the first set, you had to lose some energy. So you're probably going to be three reps in reserve if you get nine on the second set. And then you're going to get be two reps in reserve on the third set. And there you're going super slow. If you were to go to zero, if you're going to do a fifth set and on the ninth rep, you shit the bed halfway through the rep. So you've got nine, eight reps plus a shit rep, you know, you failed. Certainly if you're failing, you probably should pull out and not continue to do sets because you're just going to drive yourself into a neurological hole. Now, another way of doing it is you do nine reps, the first set, eight reps, the second set seven reps, the third set, four, you know, and so on and so forth, staying at this four RAR. So you're nowhere close to getting neurologically fatigued so that you could just go all goddamn day and just rack up stimulation from excessive, from sets and sets and sets. That's why it's called a high volume, not a high intensity. Intensity means fatigue. It, an intense, high intensity training is high fatigue training that you wear yourself out so badly that you can't do very many sets in that workout. You have to take more rest days and you can only come back and hit that body part six, seven days later because you're sore for five days. The thing is, if you're, you only grow for three days and if you're sore, your body's trying to recover. So if you're sore more than three days from a workout, you're not growing anything from that workout. You're just spinning your wheels or worse, you're digging yourself in a hole. All right, now further proof. If this this was done from like 200 studies all combined. All right, now here. I want you to look at how similar these graphs are, all right? So over here we're at, you know, this is literally you can superimpose these and if I was techno wizardy, I'd know how to do that. Right here, this is 6, this is 6. That's type 1 fibers. Still getting some growth. This is 5. This is 5 IR. So at 5 IR RIR you're in the ascension range of the 2A fibers, the intermediate fibers, okay? And then right here at 4 RAR, you're at the branch point. You've capped out on the maximum stimulation of the 2A fibers, and you're starting to activate the 2AX fibers, all right? Up here, where the fuck? We're going to jump ahead a little bit because I'm ADD. This is... Two RAR, we're just going to do the OIVA zone. The OIVA zone is we've now maxed out the two AX fibers and we're activating the two X fibers. So as soon, like, let's let's bring it together here. That means that if you, oh, whoa, fucking chill your jets. All right. So if you're getting stressed out neurologically, it's because you've activated the two X fibers. If you're getting stressed out neurologically, you're also going into high velocity loss so in other words once the two x fibers are kicking in you are it, it, as soon as you notice that you're in a lower velocity state once the concentric phase isn't powerful it isn't explosive it's like eh, or you're shaking as you do it that means that you've activated this fiber type this is all that's left you're just relying on the 2X, 2X fibers. Those are the ones that get the biggest. But you basically just scratch the surface with them with 2RAR. 
and then you've maxed out their effectiveness with one RAR. Notice there is no advantage on this graph from being here at the one RAR point and being here at the zero RAR point, that you get no additional strength, benefit. you get no additional muscle stimulation whatsoever in any fiber type by going from one RAR to zero RAR. Nothing. But you clearly have an increase in fatigue and thus you'll get less total muscle growth because the nervous system has to stimulate the muscles to grow. All right, if you aren't convinced, this is electromyogram. What does that mean? They hook some shit up to your body and it detects electricity, all right? So if you use 30% of your one RM max, so let's say your max bench press is 300 pounds. So 30% of 300 pounds is 90 pounds. And you could look at these reps, like what the fuck is going on here? How many reps are there? It's like zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I mean, it goes like 50 reps. You're still getting muscle stimulation at the 50 rep points. You could be doing 40 fucking reps. Like, like if you could do, let's say, let's use simple math. Let's say you could do 40 reps with 30% of growth. If you could bench 300 pounds once, you could probably get four, use 95, put 25 on each side of the bar and crank out 40 reps. You do 10 of those, do, 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 do. you'd think that you're not going to grow any muscle, but clearly you are going to grow muscle. You're going to grow type one fiber because notice this graph lines up with this graph. All right. You're going to grow some type one fibers, but you're not going to grow anything but type one fibers and type one fibers don't get bigger when they grow. They just get denser. All right. And then you notice for a long fucking time, you're, oh, wait, it's climbing the pyramid. Oh, the pyramid looks just like this over here. All right. So it looks like around this point, around when the 2A fibers take a shit on you and you can't go anymore. And then it's like, oh, the 2A fibers are overloaded. It's time to kick in the 2AX fibers. That's when the, uh, that, that's when you can see them show up on the graph, right? So what if you were like, fuck this shit. The, I want the fibers that get the biggest. I don't care about training the intermediate fibers or the slow twitch fibers. I want the fast twitch fibers. Well, it looks like here, the fast twitch fibers kick in around seven reps. So when you're seven reps in reserve, the fast twitch fibers kick in, which means if you did eight, a weight you could do eight times. So 80% of your one rep max is typically something that's your eight rep max. So to use math, all right, if you could bench 300 pounds once, 80% of that's 240, you should be able to hit 240 eight times. If you did 240 one time, boom, you got a response. One fucking rep with 240, since it's so heavy, all, even your, your white fibers, even your fast twitch fibers, your 2AX and your 2X fibers, at least in this case, the 2AX fibers are kicking in with one rep as long as you're using something 80% of your one rep max or more. This is huge. That means you don't need to take shit to failure. You don't need to come close to failure. Do you see this thing going up? Because I sure don't. That the muscles just as stimulated by the second rep so six reps in reserve, right? Because this is zero, one, two, three, four, five. I'm sorry. So that five effective reps model, the five effective reps model, that five RAR or less RAR, in other words, RPE five or more RPE, like RPE five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That being in that negative five reps in the, you know, the five reps in the tank, five reps away from failure. All of this is the same response. In fact, if you not, if you look closely enough, it looks like zero, one, two, three has the best response. Once you go to two RAR, you're getting less of a response than three. So you gain the most muscle right here between five and three RAR. At least you get the most neuromuscular activity right here right around the time 
the two X fibers are kicking in. What this plateaus showing that they're maximally stimulated, but you're getting less neurological activity because your nervous system shot. What, 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 how does that correspond to this? Oh, wow. Look at that. Yeah. Can I zoom out of this bad boy? Let's see. Oh, I got to use this one. Um, no, am I in the right thing? I don't know what I'm in. Yep, this is the right thing. Can I zoom out of this? Oh, man, where are the children? Can you go like this? No, I don't know how to do anything. All right, well, anyway, if you look, <laughs> I wish I was smarter. I swear. All right, right there. Oh, I almost got it. It barely fits. If you look, the neurologically taxing zone, the 2RAR, the 1AR, the 0RAR is right here. The oive zone over here, a neuromuscular thing. And then you got the oive zone here. So by the time you hit the oive zone and the 2X fibers are jumping in, you've already got decreased neurological stimulation of the muscle fibers and you're getting neurological fatigue. You can't fucking dispute it that there's so much science overlapped and it's like different puzzle pieces. And then like, I'm an Indiana Jones. I'm not Indiana. This guy is Indiana Jones and assembled them together. And it's like able to open up the Ark of the Covenant and have like wraiths jump out and kill Nazis. And if you're a Nazi, I'm not saying you should die. I'm sorry. I know that's very insensitive to Nazis, but I just like Indiana Jones because I like Lucasfilm because I'm a nerd. All right, so <laughs> the point is, it's like I can't do a video without offending Chechen and Paris and Nazis. Oh, I'm such a bad person. All right, so <laughs> you get neurological. It's like, actually, the Jewish people are the ones offended because you said oy vey for neurological fatigue. They're the ones who are the most upset. It's like, well, how do you offend the Nazis and the Jews? Like, what? how do you offend both groups? I don't even understand this. All right, so, and the communists. Like, I've just offended every bad guy or a good guy or the good guy from their own perspective or whatever the fuck. So, <laughs> I better just shut the fuck up about politics. Even though it's supposed to be funny, it's just not. So, here it is. Neurological fatigue right here. Neurological fatigue right here. And that's when the 2X fiber is kicking. And remember... The way you know as an athlete when you're doing the work in the gym is because the velocity is drastically slower. So on that rep where you're like, and you grind out one rep, shut the fucking set down and save it for the next set. And I know a lot of you guys are thinking, what about intensity modifiers? What about drop sets? What about this? What about that? All that is, is you've already hit this point. You've already hit failure and you're going to add more reps on, on top of it, which is going to just drag that set out more and accumulate more fatigue. But remember, volume is measured by, I mean, growth is measured by volume and volume is measured by sets, not by reps within the set. As long as you get within about here, that five to three RAR range, you're going to get maximum muscle stimulation. You don't need to stop early, but if you do stop early, look, you're still going to get some growth. But, and if you take it beyond three RAR, if you just have no gauge and you're like, and like you have no idea where failure is and you're like, you get to failure, you're still getting to failure is still better than stopping seven reps short of failure or six reps short of failure. It's just not as good as stopping in this range. So five to three is the best long, big picture for that individual set. No, for that individual set, if you're Mike Menser or Dorian Yates, yes, getting as many reps as possible or um, dog crap. Dante getting 17 reps with 150 pounds is better than getting 12 reps with 150 pounds. I'm not going to dispute that. If you're going to do one set, then go beyond, 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 beyond failure, right? But why would you do that when you could just rest a minute and do the set again and get, instead of getting 12 reps to failure or 17 reps because you went beyond, beyond failure and you're like spotting partners getting a hernia from these doing deadlifts when, you, when you're trying to bench up, you know, like just stop at 10 reps and do another set for 10 reps and then stop at 10 reps and do another set for 10 reps. 
that's 30 reps. 30 reps is more with 150 pounds than 17 reps. So when you compare the dog crap method, the Dorian method, the Arthur Jones method, the Mike Menser method of one set beyond, beyond, beyond failure, you're still getting less effective growth than if you just did the traditional three sets of time and left some in the tank. Jay Cutler was bigger than all of those guys. And he did five sets to 12, nothing was to failure. So the argument that Mike Van Wick had was that Ronnie's the greatest of all time and what I call it, Dorian's the greatest of all time and Mike Menser's amazing. And it's like, but Jay was bigger. Jay beat all of them. And Jay did five sets of 12, not to failure. Like, what's his name? Nick Walker is bigger than any of those guys. Maybe not bigger than Ronnie yet, but he doesn't train like that. And it's like Dorian tore every muscle in his body pretty practically. And he even said, he's like, yeah, my training system was designed around not getting sick. And that's his personality. Um, now, if you're one of those people that is like, I have to be aggressive, I'm snorting pre-workout and halo testing before every workout, go ahead, do, do, do take it to failure. But if you're someone who's like over 40 and you're sick of getting hurt and you just want to grow and you don't care about ego lifting, you just are like, okay, my goal is to grow muscle. And I want to grow muscle here, here, and here. My left quad, my right delt, and my left bicep. And that's all I'm trying to grow. Then just be smart about your training and listen to the science because this was done on hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. And I know a lot of people are like, well, that's not juiced out, cracked out bodybuilders. I'm like, right. But we do have anecdotal evidence of people like Nick Walker switching to an RP style training, Renaissance periodization training and making tons of progress. John Jewett is smart as fuck. He hits every body part twice a week. He tends to hit them with a set of four straight sets that is one to two reps in reserve on every set. He doesn't take his sets to failure. He doesn't go beyond failure. And he's smart as fuck. And he grew a ton. And he's, you know, he just won a 212 show. He's probably going to win an open show pretty soon, the Legion. So you've got this, you know, a handful of the best bodybuilders in the world are also doing this. Justin Shire, Justin Shire trains like this. He goes to absolute failure. But if you watch his failure, his failure is when the velocity slows down a lot. And then he goes and he starts to get a partial rep and he aborts on that partial rep. He doesn't even struggle the partial rep through. So he's training at like RAR 0.5. But I've watched and he doesn't do that with his deadlifts. He's not partial repping his deadlifts. So he's stopping at one RAR, maybe two RAR on his deadlifts. So on isolation moves, how much fatigue are you going to get from doing a machine bicep curl? Go ahead, take it to failure. I don't give a fuck. But for something that's a compound lift, like a squat or a deadlift, you definitely don't want to take those to failure. You want to take them till they get slower. Do you remember Princess Bride? When he's like, to the death? It's like, no, to the pain. It's like, basically, we wanted, I like to think of it as being RIR1 is to the pain. It's you get velocity slows down. You want to be dead. You'd rather be dead than keep going. You know, and I know an, an arm curl is obviously not as stimulatory. So you're not going to want to be dead. But if you're doing some pull down thing and you're like, Don't go for another one. Don't go for another one. You're not a pussy. You're going to do a whole nother set. You're going to do a whole nother set of that. So it's like, who's the pussy? The person who gets 12 or the person who gets 11 three times? It's like, I got 12 reps. I'm a bigger man than you. It's like, I got 33 reps, fucktard. I'm a bigger man than you. And I have bigger muscles. I mean, it's like, it's a fact. I'm factually bigger. So that's the way to do it. And I know that this is going to be a popular video. Have I been recording this whole time? Thank fucking God. And the video, there's actually me here. Oh, I figured it out. Oh, I'm not as dumb as I look. Oh, I know. Is there anything incriminating on this? Hold on, I should check. This is like my like, whoa, black market porn or whatever. It's so okay. Schedule inbox. Oh, I, well, that doesn't tell me anything. That's 
And then, yeah, hopefully you can read that shit. Oh, boy. All right. I don't think you can read that. All right. Well, there you go. That's the video. Uh, what was it, an hour? Yeah, it was supposed to take six minutes. So how the fuck do I talk so much? Oh, I must be lonely or something. Anyway, so if you like this, click like, subscribe, share, all that shit. Ring the bell. And um, let me know in the comment section if you disagree. Like, I don't want you guys to have some big-ass gnarly fight in the comment section over this. I'm merely presenting the information that this guy compiled and I'm regurgitating and I will figure out his name. It's Finnish. I can't pronounce it. But anyway, have a good night. Toodles. Did I forget anything? No.